Hello, hello. Say hi from Madrid. My cat will be appearing once or twice, so just popping around the side here. Um, so hi, hi from Madrid. I don't know where everyone's from, certainly everywhere. Um, and just uh, welcome, welcome to the live chat. Just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Laura Ewing. I'm a character designer and I've been really lucky to be able to work in different studios and different games and illustrating books. I've I've done a little storyboarding, just wrapped my movie recently, and just here to give you a few tips and see how it goes. So I have um, some of my drawings up here, and all I want to show you is like shape language, going for round shapes and just pointed edges, storyboards here as well for different shorts. This was a short that I won a, a Goya for in Madrid. And uh, just getting personality to our characters, really. Just Go for the story more than anything else. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through a few things that we do in the course here in an hour. I will be correcting some of uh, your work if you've submitted any, and we'll answer questions at the end. This one's a storyboard here, a project that I did. And uh, I was just playing around with our characters and what the acting would be like. So just examples of my work really. I was uh, an artist here in Madrid for a while and then studied fine art in Florence and I worked my way up. I'm looking for jobs in general and lucky enough to, to work on it. So here we go, let's, let's get started. Write your questions down and we'll get to them at the end, okay? Right, gonna get some drawings out. So, one of the main things that I speak about in my course is Shape language. Basic. Quick start rules, right? So these the psychology behind them. And if we go for something round, we usually think of something quite sweet. So if I make a character who's very round shaped, right? It doesn't feel too threatening. If I create a character with angles, it's a little more unstable, maybe more dangerous. So we could kind of go one way or the other, we can either go quite sharp or we can go the other way around and unstable maybe. We can just play around with these shapes. Kind of Mustache on the side, giving him some hair. Could be all sorts of shapes. If you go with square, I'd recommend someone that's quite stubborn. Normally, when we have this kind of shape, it's people that don't really want to change much. You know, they keep the shape around, they glossy. something like this, right? But we can make it basic like this, or we can go a bit further. We can actually use these shapes and combine them. So normally I would go with something like a round head, maybe, where your skull is. Then I draw a line to separate that. Now with babies, we have a little chubbiness on the bottom, right? And then nose would be here. Okay. That would be a classic baby. They'd have a lot of space up here for those little brains, big eyes, and baby. Yeah? Now, what if I want to combine a round and a triangular shape, for example? Good. 
go with the same shape we had. But since they're not beaded anymore, their faces have grown, right? Like they go with a square jaw on the bottom. Be somebody that's set in their ways, they're quite tough, maybe. So we want to do that. And then maybe we want to add pointy nose, who knows? Start just going with some shapes. We can keep our triangles here, for example. Just play around. Where is this mess? Is this going to go down here? Or is it going to be further up? What do we like there? Are we going to give them a really long jaw? One? Maybe. Maybe. I think we'll go all the way down there. See how that changes them as well? A little bit sharper on the bottom. See how I move into a bit of a triangle on the bottom? It feels a little more threatening, a bit more evil in a way. I can do that a lot. We can soften him a little bit with his hair. We don't want to go that far. I just raise this guy. Maybe not too bad. See how I'm softening him already? These are all just shapes. Imagine if I wanted to do massive head, and then I just wanted to end it here with my ear, another ear, and I would give him oh, maybe a big nose. You see how it works, even though I'm going a bit crazy with the shapes, it doesn't need to all be super symmetrical. And the more you play around with these shapes, the wackier you get. In a way, I feel like it's more personality, you know? Maybe we'll get a bit of a bow tie in the end here. Or I can play and go the other way around and give them smaller. Change his hairstyle. It comes on. Oh, it kind of looks like a woman now. <laughs> kind of cool. This is not something we need to worry about. We can make a man or a woman look fun. A little wacky, if you like. Not going to make a woman, for example. Let's change it up. Should have changed it a little bit. Now, women in general with animation and cartoons. We tend to give them a little bit of an eye line with their makeup. Just a little bit. You don't need to go too far. I'm actually going to play around with her eyebrows a little bit further up. A little bit more personality. And that is with the eyebrows when I'm doing it, is connecting them. I think if you don't see it, I wanted to connect them because they're two things thrown together. And just to help a little bit with the angle. And I can see the hair. Maybe I can go too far. Bit of a thing. Now, if something happens when you're not checking, like I was right now just playing around, if I don't flip it up, I don't know if it's strange things. Have you noticed what's happening to her here? This. this is my eye not even realizing how far her head has gone this way. So now this is a really good trick to correct. So we give me another layer and we come in and we tighten it up. And we try and balance it all out. Well, I think I get rid of her ear. Maybe let's play with our ear. So this is just trial and error, just keep going. And a very sharp line here. And I can do a little bit of skin tightening there. Mm, 
but my clips are like right next to my wig, so it's easy to make. Just a little bit me here. Okay? So I'm trying to avoid straight lines. Straight lines are just boring and cartoons and composition in general. So let's see, if the jawline is here and the nose is here, then I want to have the eyes. See how my eye just went too far off? Like I didn't want to have an eye. I'm still going to have both the eyes um, same here. So this is the little combination of shapes. I'm not going for only square or only rectangular. I'm just playing to see what pops up. But if I want to do a full triangular nose, I can go like this. Like this. So for instance, if you have that chin, you don't really want to make your nose compete with the chin. So I am okay with keeping it. In here, you can maybe do this. Make it point out a little bit. And our noses, well, in general, what we're trying to do here is draw in 3D, even though you're doing 2D. So, what I would recommend you to do is draw your imaginary line and where is the middle of that nose? Because this face is turning towards you a little bit. So, the nose would also turn. So, then we see a little bit of the nostril on this side. That would be the line. So in the top, you see it? This line goes from here, right through the nose, right through the chin. Okay? Now, this helps us think in 3D always. What else? No, I should have the turn in more. I should be blocking this one because now I know my portions are a little bit more small. So I'm giving her a bit more hair because. Something else that I that I noticed that a lot of people forget, and me included sometimes, is you have a, um, a skull, right, in the head, and this is where it starts. Now, when you put hair on this head, it can't just start right off the bat. You can't. You've got to remember that there is skin, and then there is hair. So when you draw hair, you want to give yourself a margin here. You want to build on top. So this hair is going to be on top of this skull. Okay. So I'm just improvising here. I'm just playing around with my shape. What else do I want to do? Actually, just thinking out loud while I'm doing this, when you pull your skin up, your eyebrow goes up, right? Pulls your eye a little bit up as well, but it's not going to have your eye completely close. This one's going to be more open. And if anything, this one will be much closer. Much more closer. Cool. Now, what else can I do to play around with this? The shape. Imagine this is the ball where her shoulders go. Right? Now we want to build, actually, hold on, 3D, right? Right here. Remember, both sides. Right here. All right. Trying to make it as simple as possible to show you the best technique. I mean, I can't actually help it read very well. All right. Now, notice I'm thinking always in volume. So, here's the shoulder. This body is not just two lines. This body is a tree. Okay? That's something to keep in mind. If you're drawing a little necklace, it's going to go around. Hmm? 
Now again, first I'm drawing this tube. I don't know where I'm going with this, I'm just playing. And then I'm going to build my tube. And oh no no. Here, here's where uh, a lot of consistent details come in. When you want to do something in particular, don't do what I'm doing right now, which is completely making it up on your mind. Go look for it. Go research it. Go see what's popular. Don't keep just playing around here. Okay, so yeah, shapes. Let's see, what else? What other shapes can we go for? Let's see another combination of shapes. I can do, it doesn't have to be a square, a rectangle, or a circle. I can do a top head that is flat, so a small grain sort of thing. And then I can go big. There really is no rule. Okay. I'm going to do something like that. Let's see, which one would be nice? Do we want to take this off and just do some more in here? Again, remember this this line in the center, right? Starts off there. Then the nose is part of it. So the nose goes round here and then the circle will go there. So where is the mask gonna be? The mask is gonna have to follow where the nose is. If the nose ends here and here, then our mask has to be in this area. It can be a small mask or a big mask, but it has to fit with the volume. So if my volume is this then it's going to have to be my mouth somewhere over here. See how I'm turning? And I want to do the lip to be quite thrown off. That's fine. Just going to play this way. Now imagine if I wanted to do the hair, the beard, right? Then I have to follow the shape of the ball of the straw to keep this idea of roundness. If I had this guy the way he is, and then I just did a straight center, if I just did something straight. Flattens him out. You have to see. It's still a style, but I prefer a little bit more volume. Just to help get in there. Now I notice I've done a completely straight line on this side and a curved one on that side. And that's one of the techniques that a lot of artists and designers use to stop it from being too busy. So if you're going to make a complicated side like this one, just keep it super simple on this side. Maybe the ear, that's fine. If you put everything on this side, if you make all this hair on this side and then you've got this side, it just ends up feeling really busy. So it's not a bad thing, it's just an aesthetic thing. So I to choose one of my sides and just stick to that. Okay? That's not to get the volume up. It can be flat with the line that you don't want to get. So if the hair goes anywhere, I'd rather it went in this direction to keep this area as neat as possible. Let's make it back. 
Then I can turn around and look there, and then down. So maybe given the smallest letters. Try out. What can you do? Now, what I would also recommend is not only in faces but in bodies. You want to try to do a little bit of um, proportion testing. So imagine you have like the head is this one. And we don't want to keep the body the same size and then keep the legs the same size. Right? You want to change it up and do something maybe like a small head, massive chest, um, and then it just breaks down into uh, like long legs, for example. Or we can do a different thing. We can just go with a big head. Medium body and some short legs, for example. Okay. We can also, I don't know, try some round shapes as well. We can do some long body. It's not only about the shape of the body, it's really body particular. Maybe it's got proportions. And then because he's so small, but his head is so big, for example, we'd have to give him something to feed or something to compensate, you know? Hmm. Give, I normally want to give him big feet, I'll give him big arms as well, just to balance them out. Shorten a little bit that head, so it doesn't quite look natural. But if you just play, if you avoid this completely, just go with some sort of proportion that looks right to you so that it's a bit more sharp. The other thing I wanted to mention was parallels. So we have our character, right? This would be a typical one. We have a little character here. We don't really know what to do with the arms or the hood. Right? So it's important to find that word. You know, we just tend to go like this. We just open their arms out. One hand out here. The other hand out here. Do this before where you have left it here. Now this is fine, but I feel like your character just seems a little bit boring. No? Everything's going in the same direction. So to break that up, what I would do is, I'm going to do it on this side. 
it's fine. It's fine. Maybe try and see where your weight is. And then you stand up and you put all the weight on one of your legs, right? And you're gonna notice that your hips, so all the leg is on this one. All the sorry, all the weight is on this one. Just stretch it out. Like this leg's straight, right? Your hips gonna go up. Now what does that happen? When you get the chest relaxed leg. That's going to change your whole pelvis. And it's going to change your pose a little bit. Right, let's move your head back a little bit. So let's do balance. See, look, I'm going to put a middle line right through it here. Now, when your hip goes this way, you set it up when you're just stand, stand up, put all the weight on your left. In your left leg or your right leg, whatever, and see the pelvis go up, right? Your body tends to compensate and make your shoulders go the other way. It's not as drastic as this, it's a cartoon, but it does balance. So if I'm going to do this for cartoon sake, you want to do this. See? More fun. Now, see with my line in the center, I can keep this looking through me. And now this leg looks really weird. Why would I have my weight and my leg just pointing flat direction? I try and do a lot of 3D thinking. I know it's hard because it's a 2D drawing, but always try and place your foot before it goes in. You see? I'm drawing that line in the middle. Help me. I'm going to bring this leg in a little bit so it's not that far up. Still relaxed. It doesn't need to be that far up. And you see how I don't have my legs pointing in the same direction? I'm picking and choose. So with feet, what I normally do, if it's a high heel, for example, just a little hold here is my leg is pointing down here, right? So imagine this is the leg is pulling in, so it's the middle joint, right? It's a bit of anatomy for you there. Um, here's the knee, here's the muscle, down to the ankle. Look at this, simple, right? More complicated on this side. So, now we have our ankle here. To do a high heel, for example, what I would do is I draw a ball. And this ball is where we have the beginning of the foot, right? So where does it want to land? I draw the bottom. Imagine the foot hinges here. Now, if I just draw a ball, I know that this line down will be my high heel. I know that it will link in here. And then I can just draw a shape and get myself a high heel. If you follow the drawing, you got it. So as long as you make sure that you have a ball first, which is where your heel is going to land, and then you build, and you're going to be fine. Another tip for hands. A big one that a lot of people ask me, and I struggle myself for years now since I got a little bit more confident with it. You practice a lot with your own hands and you do a lot of sketches. You always need to practice what we're worse at. Normally, what I would do is hand is block, right? That's the base of our hand. And from here, I'm going to add stuff. So, where's my hand going to go? Is it going to be just an open hand? Right, well, there is a ball right here. And we're going to have a thumb coming out of here. Yeah? So as long as I just keep an eye on this general shape of the square and I add my thumb, like a clay model, just add a, a piece to it, then I know that I've got my fingers are divided into three. Mostly in cartoon, you do two long bits and then one shorter. But for any hand, if you know, that you're drawing, just simplify it into cubes that are going to join up. See? Now, a trick.
group that I've just chanted the deer is join the center one as one block. That's fine. Give you this appearance. You can do that, for example. Get yourself ten. Give the little one a little bit smaller. And then we have another lump on this side. So to simplify it, have a thumb. Here I don't want to really do everything in the same uh, direction because it just looks boring as a result of that. We don't want to make everything so predictable. So what I'm doing here is I'm separating them out a little bit. See? Now with the wrist. Oh, never. You've got your hand. You know, it's a bit odd when they've got uh, nails if you want to, you know, simplify it in the way. Or you can go full on graphic. Do something like this. Hey, get off my screen. Or you can go very feminine and feminine fingers would be quite something. So just try it out. Again, you're going to do a closed fist. Then have a look at your block first, your basic block. I'm looking at my own hand right now. And I know that there's some here in the front here. And then I've got fingers, right? One, two, three, four. Now I don't really want them all to line up each finger. This is a bit boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one line up a little bit higher, this one a little bit lower. See, and just keep the edges. And there we go. You can just kind of aim like that. I'm not sure you can see the knuckle. This is a little bit from the inside, so it was folding in to the other. And if you want to stick something inside, I don't know if you can see it here. And they just feel like they're holding it, but then you have to make sure the knuckle goes around the same way. The same way. Because you want to make it look like you're not actually holding it, you're not just having your fingers. Okay, so that would kind of explain how things are holding it. Just to make it doesn't quite look right. You see, I'm just reworking, reworking constantly. Each finger will probably be higher up. Adjust. Okay, but it's always a simple shape. It's a square, circle, finger, and then this one, two, three, and four. And you start bending in the direction until you get fingers. All right. So, what I was thinking now is to correct a few of the homework assignments and things that people have sent me. Um, I have this one here. This one's by J. Martin Riva, and it's teach me break. It's a, a submission to the course. We haven't corrected it yet, so I'm just gonna put it here. And let's see which one is this one. So we can uh, try this one. All right. So they're really good. What I would do is I would try it, and I'm just doing it for some colors. I'll try and keep the 
direction of the element going with the body. So about the neck is going this way. Always remember the clothes are over the body. So if your body is in 3D, your clothes need to be in 3D too. So just to emphasize that, that's what I'm doing here. And then she has breath from the top, but it kind of disappears. So I would emphasize that more into her. Actually, in her facial recognition. A little more interesting. I think most actually, yeah, in all of them, the poses are pretty long. So I would work on that first. So I would actually bring this up here and emphasize this way what we've heard about before. Then I would bring up this one. Now I'm repeating and fixing. You can see that for the first time around ever. Okay, so here's my face. Now I'm gonna. This is really cool too, actually. Ah, oh, it's gonna feel funky when it's like. Instead of going completely flat that way, I'm going to try and bring it towards it a little bit more. This is going in this direction. So I'm just going to choose the side that I'm interested in this time. So now I'm going to make her a little bit closer to me. And I'm going to use the second down as well. I'm not putting some things different in each hand. This is what I was talking about, not doing the same exact thing in both hands. You want to have it doing something different. So, what I would do is, in this bit here, it looks a little bit wackity. It's a little bit of bone. I do like the mask of it, though. So, I would do a little bit of bone. How it changes from here, which looks a little bit flat, to a bit more volume. That's basically what I do in all of them. Now, let me correct somebody else's work, and I'll, I will get back to this one and send it to you um, through our, our community course. But it takes time. Okay, so this is Mercedes Rico. It's really cool. I love these curtains, they're brilliant. One thing I would do is, um, okay, this leg, okay. yeah. this, um, this leg here is looking a bit broken, the foot, so I don't know why it's looking broken. I would bring it forward, and put it here. Mm. Mm. 
These eyes. We're doing the dark here. We want to do the eyes want to be around the ear area. Do these dark ones here. So we can give her at least a little bit of forehead because not everything is super high up. So I would do that and then this is where a little curl would come. And then the hair would go in this area. That's what I would do. This guy as well, what I would work on is try and think of things more in volume. So these shapes are really cool. I would just try and add more volume to them. Thank you so much for the effort in the homework. It's like too short to bring it down further. And again, you're tending to make your legs so your feet go this way. They're looking broken, like they're drifting a little bit. So just bring one forward, at least one here. And then the other, you can kind of, I would kind of tend to go that way. So don't go all the way flat. Okay? Right, I think I can get some shoes. Again, I'll change the arms to give me a little bit more like the shape. Simplify this side. Okay, I'm going to redraw this and send it to you. So, this is just the general. Here's some, I like your final one. So, yeah, again, this would work on 3D a little bit more. And let's see, do I have another one? Yeah, this is the other one of another student of mine who's done incredible work. Uh, throughout this course, I'm really, really happy with the results, and he asked me to correct this. So I think he's really talented. I think what I'll do is um, do a little quick fix here. But let's see what I can do. I, you know what? I noticed that it's so. The first thing I noticed is the teeth and the, the tongue looks like they're the same thing. So I try it and do. Let's do it in black. So it's just easier. I would basically do, I would separate these guys. Uh, what else would I do? Um, probably, I like the finger a bit. Mm, the nose, I would work on a little bit more volume, maybe. Like up here. Thank you. 
So yeah, volume. That's so fine, I'll get to you. I'll send you the watch, so it should be in the worry. Volume, volume, volume. Well, that's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, main thing. Yeah, change it up. Try and avoid arms in the same direction, feet in the same direction. Change up the shape. Go with a really round and a really square and a really triangular and a combination of both. And you want narrow, you want wide. Try it all. It's so much more fun. So hey, I am. Um, I'm wondering if you guys have any questions. I can do that for a bit. Hello, hello. Let's see. Oh wow, there's a lot of people like this one. Hey, I'm checking my phone. This is a mess up. Okay, in Photoshop, better than Procreate or Creator. Um, two different tools. It's drawing. Photoshop was originally made for um, photographs, so Procreate is definitely designed more for artists. But definitely, if you have the chance, try it out. Just that, for example, I don't have an iPad and I won't get one soon, so it's, it's limited to that. But it, I've, what I've heard is that it's amazing and it's like drawing on paper. I don't think it'll make you a better artist, it's just a really comfortable tool. Another question? I'm too late to start illustrating at 32 years old. No, never, never too late. I think it's more the hours that you spend uh, on it than your age. It's really, do you know when people tell me, oh, I haven't, uh, I don't know, I draw like a two, like, like a 10 year old, no? Like how long, when did you stop drawing? Maybe around when you were 10? It hasn't advanced, but if you put in the hours, you can get really far. It just depends on the dedication and what you're going to going for. Like, you going for really, really elaborate, or you going for simpler? It depends on the style and, and the time. The time you put into it. it really, really doesn't affect your age at all. How do you get the right proportions while exaggerating characteristics? I would keep that ratio of each one of the things has to be different to the other. So those three elements of head, chest. And legs make them different and start adjusting. It's just something you you look at and you're like, something's weird. Normally it's the torso. If I were to give you any advice, is keep the torso short. Unless you can go wide, but don't go too long because it starts making characters look too lanky and weird. Um, and heads. Um, think about the head. Unless it's a really exaggerated cartoon where the heads are huge, you want to balance it out somehow. And it's, Feet or with the length so that their head doesn't just go straight up to the ground, like less, maybe make them shorter um, for the gravity, things like that. I would, I would try and, and keep those three things different but related. You know, the head, the legs, and the torso. Just play with those bits and pieces and try it out. It's just hit or miss until you like it, really. What is the biggest mistake people make when designing a character? I think one of the biggest things is you don't look at your character from different angles. I think turnarounds are one of the hardest things to do, but really helpful. If you're designing this character and you make him so cool from the front, like this mustache, this, this, this look, and then you when you do your profile, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. You've got to tune it in, you know, and maybe make the nose further out or, or play with that. So I would say, yeah, the biggest mistake is not not thinking in 3D, just the first thing, and not trying to turn around to see if it all works. What else? Could you explain in a brief way how to be consistent in facial features and how to make the character look the same throughout expressions? I hope that makes sense. Okay, yeah, it did make sense. Uh, a brief way of how to cons be consistent. Uh, I would study this character. I would really, really break him down. Be like, okay. Um, I would say, right, so how big is his forehead? How big is his jaw? How wide is his nose? I would really study him. I would like look around and if they give you a toner and even better. Um, so you just look at him and then you're going to make your, your, 
expressions based on that as well. Think in volume and compare the eye, the, the inside of the eye, the nose, the mouth, the other thing. If it's a cartoon, it'll be exaggerated, but you can get an idea of what it looks like. And then you work on your expression. So I would say play with the expression first and then adjust it to your character to make it look like your character. But pull the expression first. Also practice. Just look at yourself in the mirror and do the expression. And yeah, then address your character and make it look like that guy or that girl. How do you draw according to perspective? I don't know. <laughs> um, I try and think of it as perspective as a guide, but not um, something that I have to be tied up to these lines. It's it's important to think of where your eyesight is or where your camera is, right? If I look from above, the pencil I see at the top of my pen, I see a lot more of the top than the bottom. So I try and, and look at that. I look at a lot of film, a lot of cinema and the way they've shot it. And that gives me references for drawing and perspective. If I'm not sure how it should look, I can see, take reference and then adjust to my character if it's really extreme. If it's not super extreme, then I would just try a medium angle and see. It depends on the narrative of my story. But there are tools and programs that are really helpful that you can just mark the line and it will do the perspective for you and you just base everything in the line. So it depends what works for you. What is the biggest to say? Oh, I missed one. I missed a question. I don't know what that was. Let me see if it comes back. Okay, I'll do this one instead. Which is uh, one of my favorite animated movies? Um, lately, the Spider-Verse was one of my favorites. I think it was so different. I love watching something different. I think cinema has fallen on the same tropes a lot lately, and I'm not a fan of remakes as much. I do think they're lovely and nostalgic, but I'm really, really looking for something new, something different. And the best one I saw recently was the Spider-Verse, the animated one. It's beautiful, the work they did in there. That'd be my favorite for now, but I'm waiting for new ones. Favorite character designers? Steven Silver is really good. I took a few courses with them. He just goes to the extreme. He does these really cartoony, kind of like 60s style. Um, but there's other other people. Uh, there's so many. Walter Tulp, Walter, I think it's Walter Tulp. Um, he's fantastic. I've seen him and I've taken courses with him as well. I, do you know what I do? I, I contact, or at least I find out online, if they take any courses, my favorite people, if they do courses, and I just go for it. And I just keep improving myself. I need to learn. And I've absorbed those little nuggets of information and tried putting them into my course because they're full of information, these people. And I've just added to my arsenal and slowly been putting it into this course as well to help you guys with things that I picked up along the way. Yes. Cool. I think that's it. I think I missed a question around there somewhere, but I'm oh, sorry, I didn't get to it. Um, I think we're going to say goodbye to this little guy's dinner time for us. Um, really, really nice to meet you all. Hope you got out of this, uh, something out of this hour. And um, if you ever want to chat, message me, or um, look into the course, be part of the community, all right? La idea es como algo muy frágil. Se me fue la hebra. I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que lo tuyo?